Hey everybody, Jillian here with a brand new Bible journaling process video. Today I'm going to be going through Illustrated Faith's Mark Maker devotional, journaling with it rather, and I'm giving you a quick peek here at what I'm keeping inside my traveler's notebook. So I have the sticker sheet in there and then I've got this clear pouch. Uh, and I've got an extra traveler's notebook insert in there which I like to just jot random things down, um, just a space to think out loud on paper. Now I like to use this pocket to store stamps. I saw Shauna Noel use one of these for when she was traveling and I really liked it. So I picked one up from Amazon, I'll link it below. And it enables you to pretty much take your whole kit with you on the go. You've got a little pen loop there and it all just fits nicely in here. Now I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to create a process video for you today. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out because I will be using those stamp set that stamp set here in Isaiah 12. Um, but here is what else I plan to use. I've got the washi tape from the kit. I've got some of the die cut paper pieces like this title, Amen Marks, a tab. I've got um, the little word fetty that goes along with the tab. These are just things that I thought I might want to use. And I knew I wanted to use this card from Dayspring that Shauna Noel created. Um, I actually purchased this a while ago knowing that I would not use it as a card but rather in my Bible journaling. And so that's what I'm going to do today since I'm working through the Amen portion of the Devo kit. I've got some acrylic paints up there and I'm going to create a like painterly background and then use this Amen card on top of it. I'll go ahead and link or list all of the supplies in the video description below if you want to check any of them out. So I'm going to first start by creating this dark, this darker color. It's like a bluish purple. So I've got some target paints here and I started out using the Oxford blue, opening that guy up and adding some of the heather on my paint palette here to try and um, color match this color purple. I ended up going in and having more um, success adding in a little bit of the dark lapis and the lilac to this paint here to achieve that, that darker color. So I'm just going to show you very quickly how I mixed it here. It did take me a little bit and my paintbrush got a, a bit gunky, but it's fun and therapeutic and relaxing to swirl paint around on a palette with a brush. So a few minutes later and I'm feeling like this is a pretty good match for this die cut piece. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside and mix a different color. I'm going to use mostly pink for the background so I'm using the Liquitex Heavy Potty um, acrylic paint in light portrait pink and I'm going to mix that with some white. I apologize for it being out of frame. I'm just going to go ahead and take the largest paintbrush I have and sweep this onto the page. I'm not getting the brush terribly wet because I do want to see those brush strokes, like the bristly brush strokes on the, ba on the background of the paper. And I'm just showing you the tag there. It's a pretty good match, not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it's good enough for what I want to do. And then I'm going to take this purplish pink color and just lightly put down some swatches of color, again going for those dry brush strokes on the, paper, on the page. Baby wipes are my best friend, were my best friend in this video. I use them a lot to clean brushes and, and some other tools that I'll show you on, well that I'll show you in a minute. Next I'm going to go in with another not very wet brush into the Robin's Egg Blue color. All of these are Target Handmade Modern paints with the exception of that pink Liquitex. And while all of the colors all of the other colors are still wet. I'm just kind of sweeping color onto the page. Not so concerned if they mix. It actually, you know, creates a pretty cool look and I like that. So I'm just um, wanting to get these three colors on the page and then I'll go in with one of these Dina Wakely Media Tools. They are silicone so they clean up way easier than a paintbrush. And I'm just going to dab the tip of it into this goldenrod acrylic paint also from Target. and put like dots of this around the page, really mimicking the look of what was on that die cut tag. I'm pretty sure that the pieces that I'm using today, with the exception of that Amen card, um, are all available in digital format. So the physical mark maker kit is sold out at illustratedfaith.com. But if you wanted to join in, I would encourage you to do so with the digital kit. The devotional content is amazing. Sean did a really great job. So next I 
decided to go ahead and cut a heart out of this greeting card and the back is this really pretty teal color so you could use it as a tip in and kind of put your journaling on the back if you just wanted to cut a piece out i took the upper i took advantage of the the blank part on the back to kind of sketch a heart out before i cut into it um, and like cut it down to nothing trying to get a good heart shape. So um, I just kind of freehanded one with my pencil and then I'm going to go ahead and, and start cutting. I like the look of wonky hearts and so I'm going to trim it um, trim it down a couple times to get that wonky uneven look. And I, I originally had um, sketched it out smaller and then realized when I flipped it over, well, you're not really going to see one whole amen word, and that's really what I wanted to accomplish. So when I cut it a bit larger, I was able to get um, one written in all caps, which was great because I wanted to layer it with this piece that said amen marks, and decided, just like in the illustrated faith process video I did, to um, kind of cut down the die cut piece and make my own title here so you can see that it reads from the heart amen marks, and I just love the way that that worked out. So I'm just going to take my Illustrated Faith tape runner and reinforce it with my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. I've been reaching for this a lot lately. Um, it really cuts down on the amount of adhesive that I use and ensures that things are not going anywhere. If you don't have one of these things um, and you you can afford it, go ahead and pick it up You know, at your next visit to, let's say, Michael's with like a 40% off coupon. You may be thinking, well, it's just a stapler. I don't need a stapler. I thought the same thing, <laughs> but I use it so much. So I'm thinking here now it might be fun to layer one of these pencils um, underneath my title here. And so I'm looking through Shauna's Print and Pray set, um, I think it's called Mark My Heart. And uh, I have these pencils printed on clear sticker paper. Just like in the Illustrated Faith Process video that I did on Monday, I'm going to cut this guy out, put it on some white cardstock, and then cut around it, making it look as if I had printed this guy on um, onto white cardstock originally. So I've got this guy cut out and I'm just again layering him underneath that word marks. It creates like a nice little shelf for that word to rest on. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out where I want it. Do I want it pointing to the verse or to the outside of the page? And then I'm um, going to take the Illustrated Faith Tape Runner and lay that guy down there and then trim off the excess because I don't want the pencil going underneath the entire heart. It kind of looks a little weird to me and it would be covering my verse. And then I think I take the tiny attacher and staple it um, one more time to make sure that piece doesn't go anywhere. Thinking here about maybe using this little heart die cut from the kit um, just to layer underneath there to bulk up the piece, but decided not to. So now that the um, the background is dry, I went in and off camera with my heat tool. I'm going to go ahead and stick this guy down right next to the verse. And then thinking about here, how I want to draw attention to my verse. Do I want to use this big brush pen to highlight it? And um, decided against that, I really wanted the focal point of the page to be this heart. And if I had like a big blob, a big block of yellow highlighter marks, then that would really draw your eye instead. So now that I've got the large element on my page down, I'm going to go ahead and look to the stamp set for some, um, to stamp some art marks around. I decided to go with this little trio of marks. I haven't used this one yet and I'm so glad that I did. I really love the look of this. This is not a difficult background to create. It was super simple. It's just just layering things and having fun and, and know that if you kind of put something down, down that you wish you hadn't, you could always go over it with either white paint or cover it up with a patterned paper heart something. You can kind of flex those creative muscles when you feel like you've made a mistake. So next I want to think about a tab option and I had originally pulled out one of the tabs included with the die cut pack and I'm thinking instead I really want to use this amen piece that I had cut out. So just weighing my options here and I think I'm going to go with this amen die cut. I am going to layer one of these pieces underneath it, thought maybe this little trio. Nope, I'm going to go ahead and go with the teal heart. I'm going to use the tiny attacher to get those guys to stick together. 
And I thought about putting some washi tape underneath it to kind of bulk it up a little bit. But once I put it down, I felt like it was competing with the rest of the page. And like I said, I really wanted the focus to be on the like painterly background and, and the heart and the title and everything. So I decided not to do that, but instead just to layer these guys together, um, make another little stamp cluster up there at the top, and then just have that be my tab. So in the devotional, Donna encourages us in Isaiah 12, 4, she asks, what do you want to proclaim amen to in your life? Write those down in the margins of your Bible to reflect on as you continue to process all he is doing in your life in this season. And so I'll read Isaiah 12, verse 4 to you. It says, in that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. So Shauna talks in the previous Devo about ways that the word amen is used in scripture, or just draws our attention to the fact that it's used in different ways. Word nerd that I am wanted to look that up, and she's right. It's totally cool. At least three different um, uses of the same word in both Hebrew and Greek, and had a lot of fun looking into that. The word praise here that's used in Isaiah 12 4 is yada, which means worship with extended hands. So I'm going to journal off camera about those things that God has done in my life that I want to show huge praise hands for, that I want to lift my hand up to him in praise to exalt his name. And I would just encourage you guys to do the same. Get out your mark maker kit, whether physical or digital either one will work either one is amazing and I really do think you're gonna love it and go ahead and praise his name in the margins of your Bible worship with us it's so much fun that's gonna do it for me today I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you soon